that's what's so great about our community foundation is that we actually don't we we specialize in the community versus just in one aspect of the community and so over these years there have been thousands of grants thousands of lives changed in a variety of different areas and this is a story that happened 25 years ago when the Vancouver Foundation gave a grant to a small organization to buy a 25-foot aluminum skiff and today that skiff is still operating and over those 25 years we've heard that thousands and thousands of children have learned about marine biology and have sat in that skiff and learned about the environment that's around them and it's such a wonderful story of of really legacy giving. So this is some one thing. It, it reminds us of what foundations are about, that you can give a single gift, and that gift can go on and on and on for years. And in this case, that story is embodied in a little aluminum skiff. Uh, if it wasn't for the Vancouver Foundation, kids wouldn't get out on the water because, as you know, it's just so expensive to get onto a charter boat. Because community foundations are willing to often be quite bold and innovative in their funding, that sometimes an organization that can't get funding anywhere else, once it gets it from a community foundation, or in our case, Vancouver Foundation, that in turn, it's like the seal of approval. And that in turn opens the doors for those organizations to get funding from other, other areas and other funders. So it's great. We've provided ongoing grants to them for programs over the years. The foundation was one of the local organizations that took leadership around the establishment of the, of the shelter back in the mid-90s. That program is an example of what happens when a community foundation sees multiple kinds of requests coming from organizations around a common cause and what can happen then when you bring that group together to say, you're all looking for money to do exactly the same thing and how can we do this better and how can we do this smarter and the shelter was born from that conversation. Red Deer and District Community Foundation, again, uh, were open-minded enough to help us through that process. They could see the value in that amalgamation, uh, and that's what they're about, is making sure not just to fund, but to, to fund things that are going to have a bigger ripple effect than they already do, and that serve the community better. And they listened, and they knew we're listening, and they know how rare it is to find that unconditional love and acceptance and how critical it is to people's successes here. Do you know what? It depends on everybody's circumstances different. That's what I like about it is everybody's, everybody's treated individually on an individual basis just because of the fact that some people need to stay longer and some people don't. And we always say we never know which time might be the time for them, you know, where they're gonna kind of blossom and go. They're doing a great job. The three organizations together are focusing on not addictions and homelessness, they focus on housing and health. We work very closely with them as an organization and we're proud to do that. In Quebec, we're often reminded uh, of the role of artists in our community and if community foundations across North America, across the world are involved in arts and culture funding is because the arts is seen as a fundamental tool for uh, bringing communities together. Uh, Dynamic Theatre Factory started this in 2007 and the idea was we wanted to offer a place where kids with special needs who are constantly labeled and constantly told no you can't that they could find a place where they could finally come and walk out of here going yes I can. Now the kids were here in this theater under the lights with music and uh, entrances and exits and lots of things that they had to remember thanks to this foundation we were able to have this program of hope. Uh, we have this uh, uh, professional author that goes into the schools and uh, asks the kids to write their, uh, their, their uh, stories. And, uh, and we're doing that in Toronto. There's on, uh, another cell that's doing that in Quebec City. The Le Clou is in Montreal doing that. And there's another cell uh, starting this year with uh, Théâtre Français of the uh, National Arts Centre in Ottawa. Just to, to, I see also to see those kids who are so, uh, they're so intelligent actually, they're so sensitive and it's wonderful to be in contact with them through their writing. It's very interesting. With the Fundy Community Foundation support, we canvassed and got a bunch of volunteer drivers, so there's 20 of us now. 
and advertised and began the program three years ago. Uh, out of that grew this Charlotte Dialer Ride, a volunteer based driving uh, to get the most vulnerable in our community uh, transportation to where they needed to go. Found out about Dialer Ride in, in being able to help me get to and from job interviews, but today I have uh, to go see my doctor and I'm actually going to get the signature on the all clear to allow me to uh, to get back into the workforce. Charlotte Dial Ride has come in in a really tight spot for us. We were in a bit of a pickle as to how to get Caleb back and forth to his autism therapy five days a week. We have no vehicle. We live in the country and transportation was a bit of a problem for us. Here I am, you know, a month later talking with great drivers, going back and forth to St. George every day. We, Caleb gets the therapy he needs. Funded Community Foundation is extremely proud of the Charlotte County Alternative Transportation Association and Charlotte Dial-A-Ride. It is working 100%. Uh, there's returns, not monetary, but there's returns. <laughs>